My name is Dylan Frazier, and I'm a wilderness explorer. This is Dylan. Despite having a YouTube channel dedicated to outdoor adventures, Dylan is not a true wilderness explorer. Let me explain. In my mind, one of the marks of a true wilderness explorer is having climbed a true mountain. Yes, Dylan has hiked on mountains many times before, but they have all been essentially molehills when compared to the peaks that a true wilderness explorer would be proud of. The closest Dylan ever came to this achievement was attempting to summit Colorado's highest mountain, Mount Elbert. Talking is hard work, but I feel like it is necessary to make a video. But, unfortunately, he met his match against acute altitude sickness approximately 1,000 feet from the summit, and he proceeded to vomit the entire contents of his stomach. Now, four years later, it is time for Dylan to attempt his first true mountain, this time in the beautiful state of Utah. At 11,329 feet of elevation, Pfeifferhorn is one of the tallest mountains in the Wasatch Range. Due to its slight physical resemblance to the Matterhorn in Switzerland, it is sometimes referred to as Little Matterhorn. I began my journey at the White Pine Trailhead in Little Cottonwood Canyon. From there, I would make the ascent up to Red Pine Lake and spend the night. Then the next morning, I would make my ascent up to Pfeifferhorn. The total trail would be about 5 miles in length and would include about 4,000 feet of elevation gain. Even for somebody who hikes on a regular basis, this would still be no easy feat.
And a choice to never leave is behind It's feeling right this time I'm feeling more than fine It's love at second sight If we wanna make it right Then, after several hours of hiking, I finally made it up to Red Pine Lake, just as the sun was beginning to set, casting a warm glow on the mountains overhead. Well, I made it all the way up to Red Pine Lake, and I must say that was definitely a very challenging hike, but I think it was, it was definitely worth it. So you might notice I don't have Lakin with me today, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore my wife, and I love it when she goes on trips with me, but I think there is something kind of special about just being out in a place like this by yourself for the night, be able to enjoy some true solitude.
Mm -hmm. This is expensive ramen. And by that, I mean it was, I think, $1.20 for a package, rather than like 30 cents. <laughs> I think it's probably about time that I tell you about some of the gear that I'm using. Now, the important thing to note about all of the gear I have is that it's all really inexpensive. It basically either all came from Amazon or from Walmart. There's really not any huge surprises here. Uh, one specific item is this dry bag. So a company known as Side by Side, as you can see here, Side by Side, they reached out to me uh, a couple months ago and they, they sent me a couple products to try out. Uh, this being one of them, this nice dry bag, which is incredibly lightweight, which I really like about it. They also sent me a power packer, as they call it. Um, I'll link over a uh, some B-roll footage over to show you what it looks like, but it's, it's pretty cool. It's like a pouch that helps you contain all of your batteries, memory cards, whatever you know, charging cables you might have. It's really helpful for that. But anyway, they, they were kind enough to send me those products for free, uh, just under the condition that I'd feature them on the channel. So here they are. Um, I'll have links to their uh, products in the description below. But what I'm gonna be using the dry bag for tonight is to actually put all of my food scented items in and use as a bear bag. This is kind of a, a trick I've used uh, before while backpacking because dry bags are nice and lightweight supposedly they keep the scent of food uh, inside a little bit better than some other bags might because they're sealed um, and they are just real easy to just toss up into a tree and come back for in the morning so the tent i've got here is from a company called bestport Never heard of them before, but the tent you see here is for two people. I think it weighs about five pounds or so, and it only cost $80 on Amazon. And if you know anything about uh, backpacking tents or backpacking gear in general, you'll know that that's a pretty good price to pay, especially for a tent that is good for two people, has two doors, and only weighs five pounds. It also has a vestibule on both sides. Pretty, pretty nice, and it seems to be pretty well made too. The only complaint I have with it so far is that it kind of smells like fish. Like seriously, like the inside of it, the material, it smells like fish. I was pretty anxious at the climb I had ahead of me the next day, and frankly I didn't sleep great. Also the fact that a big moose was walking around my tent at 4am that morning didn't help either.
I took some of the heavier items out of my pack and hid them behind a tree, leaving only behind the essential items I needed to make it to the summit. As I hiked from Red Pine Lake up to the saddle, I enjoyed seeing the distant mountain views covered in beautiful morning light. All of that enjoyment was shattered by the grueling task of climbing the final 500 feet up to the saddle. The views from the saddle were incredible. However, the job wasn't done yet. Another half mile and another 500 feet of elevation gain stood between me and the summit. There was also one slightly technical class three scramble right at the end of the saddle. But unfortunately, I didn't film it. I needed to put my camera in the bag in order to keep my hands free for the climb. Finally, after many hours of hard work and physical exertion, I was rewarded with success. Well, that's that. The funny thing about climbing a peak like this is that you put so much effort into it, but then you only spend like 10 minutes at the top before you go back down. But the 10 minutes that you do spend up here are amazing. <laughs>